Hi everyone, in today's video we're going to build on uh, last week multi-layer Perceptron uh, library and we're going to add uh, the possibility to um, select ourself or uh, activation function. Right now if you um, followed this API and you look at the code we have here the sigmoid and um, the derivative is kind of hard coded in there in the back propagation um, part of the code. Um, it's fine if you want to have a full network which has only a sigmoid activation function. However, uh, in most neural network, um, the sigmoid is not the one that is chosen. We have ReLU, we can have leaky ReLU, we can have different kind of activation function. So one improvement we could do over here is to uh, have this layer of, fle of flexibility. Right now we have the neuron, we have the layer over here that is creating all of the neuron. What we would want is to select a layer and say we want all the neuron in this layer to be ReLU or all the neuron in this layer to be a sigmoid, uh, leaky ReLU, um, LU and so, so on and so forth. So what we're going to do, we're going to first uh, make a review of all um, the activation function I can find and uh, we're going to uh, set up a class which will allow us to add any kind of activation function. All right. So here we are, uh, like always, the code is on my GitHub. So if you prefer to go through it uh, by yourself, you can just click on the link in the description. Um, so I found some good resource. So there was a Stack Exchange um, post with a lot of, of uh, the activation function. So I would suggest you to go through it if you want to look at uh, the formulas and the guy explanation. That was really great. Um, there's also this article in an Analytic uh, Vidya. Um, which uh, is kind of basic but uh, explain to you where uh, those uh, activation functions should be used and in what kind of scenario um, so I was able to get some from here too so we have about 20 of them um, I'm sure there's plenty of more than that but I think with um, those two resources I was able to get most of them um, so here we're gonna look at each of each one of them uh, and see what what kind of activation function they give um, so here we have this helper function which will help us plot the activation. If you see here we have a minimum range and a maximum range. So minus 30 to 30. And then we're just doing those activation function by passing the function as a parameter. Um, and then we're just going to plot it with matplotlib. So um, some of the activation function won't work with that range. But we're going to do some, some stuff to uh, fix that. So the first one, the easiest to... Uh, think about is the identity which is doing absolutely nothing so you, you don't really have an activation function so you're doing your kind of linear regression and then you you, you end up with the, the uh, sum of all of these right uh, and then you just give it back so um, if you're doing this kind of activation function it's like you you don't have one uh, so it's gonna be harder to uh, to learn stuff that was the first one uh, if you build on the identity, you can do uh, the linear uh, activation function, similar than the other one, but you have a slope now, which you can um, you, you can parameterize, and then um, it's still linear, right? It's it's linear, so there's not much change uh, compared to this one. Uh, you can also add the bias, but this these two are just um, are not really really used. So we have those. We have the step function so it's either um, 0 or 1 right so uh, it's kind of a hard threshold here you see a, sl a slight slope just because of how we're doing the, the plotting but what you really have is uh, 0 for everything smaller than 0 and then you have 1 over here um, so that's it for this one there's not much to it it's not really used to right uh, because if you're doing this you're always going to do a one off or a zero. Uh, I think this was used back in the days when they, they, they tried to emulate what the, a neuron will uh, actually do in the brain. Um, neuron all, either fire or not, right? They have this thing called the action potential. Um, but um, it's a bit more complicated than just firing or not firing um, because an action potential either happen or doesn't happen. Um, but this one is not, a, it's not a good way of representing uh, uh, the, the activity in the brain um, yeah so this one is not really used 
The other one is the piecewise linear. So it's kind of getting um, uh, getting a bit more complex. But what you're actually doing is you have either one or zero over here, and you have a range over here. So minimum, maximum. So here I set this guy to minus six to three. Uh, so here this is minus six and this is three. Um, don't look really at the tick over here. Um, and um, that's what you're doing. And uh, if you're if you're smaller than minus six, you have a zero. If you're greater than three, you have a one, right? In between, you have a line, right? So it's a linear function over here. Um, and it's interpolate, uh, you, you're creating the, the parameter of the line, the slope and the bias, uh, given the, the maximum and the minimum over here, those range. That's what you have. Um, it's kind of not that bad actually, uh, because if you if you look at the the one afterward, it looked like a hard 10h uh, function y if you put the slope uh, steep enough. Um, but this one is getting better. You can actually use that guy. The only problem with that guy is the you have to find the range, um, so it's more parameter. So sigmoid, this one is the one that we're using in our network, and it's uh, one that is widely used. Um, not much to say about this one, uh, but if you're using this one, you, you're going to get something good. Uh, so this is a, a, a good non-linearity to have. You can have also the complementary log log, which is kind of similar, but a bit different um, over here, this, this small uh, this small part over there. Um, but it's kind of similar to it. Uh, there's not really much to, to say about this one, So, but you can use this one if you if you think that it is going to be good for your problem. Um, here you have the bipolar, which is uh, literally uh, one or minus one. So this is similar to the step function, except uh, instead of uh, going to zero, uh, you go to minus one. So if we were to look back at the neuron um, in the brain, it would be similar to having uh, either an activating neuron or inhibitory one. Um, so someone that does something that can give an action potential or something that can uh, not uh, that can repress an action potential in the next neuron um, or, it's, or it's a bit more complicated than that because uh, the next neuron should be not a bipolar otherwise they will become inhibitory um, so it's it's a good kind of a good idea but the it won't model the brain that that well and actually this is not the goal of a, a, a neural network it's not to model the brain. Um, it, it's inspired from the brain uh, to solve problem that uh, an actual brain can do, but uh, it's in no way representative of uh, what's happening uh, with those activation functions. It's a bit more complex. Here we have the bipolar sigmoid, which is a sigmoid which go from one to minus one. So it's the same thing as the one above, um, except you, you can have a, kind of an inhibitory uh, negative action on the next um, neuron. Here we have tan h. Um, it's good, right? It's kind of it, it's kind of like the um, the bipolar sigmoid, uh, actually like, like this one. Uh, so this one is actually uh, not a bad. Uh, we have the uh, Lucan tan h, um, which is taken from this paper, right? It's actually uh, it, it's better than tan h in uh, some instance. Um, so you have those, um, this weird constant over here in this one. Um, but I, from the paper, he found it by playing around a bit with it. So it, it has a different shape. It's a bit more smooth over here. Uh, and the range is different. So that, that's what you have. Here we have the r tan h, which look like a piecewise linear, uh, but it actually, um, it's, it's looking like a piecewise linear and a tan h function. So uh, you have that, you have from 1 to minus 1. Um, so you have that, you have the absolute uh, activation function. So there's no, there's no negative value and you have this little kink over here, uh, which is not that great to have. But um, yeah, that's what, sorry, I, I, I never seen that used anywhere though. So I'm not sure if this is too relevant. Uh, but it's a possibility, right? You never know with uh, with uh, neural network what work and what doesn't work. Sometimes stuff work for weird reason. If we look at um, this guy, 
he did some stuff um, here. He's starting to do some weird things, right? Uh, by modifying the ReLU function that we're gonna see in a few. Um, and he says that he's getting, he's getting good result on MNIST for some reason. Uh, so we're still not sure what 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 nonlinearity is good and what nonlinearity shouldn't be used um, to learn something. So that thing seems to be good. I don't know why. Okay, so then we get to the ReLU functions. Um, this one is actually really, really good and it's uh, super efficient, uh, but it can lead to dead neuron um, because of this thing here, the zeros after um, at the at the zero uh, of the um, of the x-axis. So um, yeah, there's no, no there's no negative. It's either a zero or uh, a, a, a linear function. Um, yeah. So the next one, the leaky value, uh, fix this by having the 0 0.01 multiplier. So you you're actually not at zero. You're just a bit smaller than that. So it's still negative, but it's super small. Um, and this one is actually doing really really good. There, it prevents dead neurons. Um, and during the training. Here you have the parameterized value, which is uh, similar than this one, except that now you have control over this uh, slope parameter. Uh, it need to be smaller than one, otherwise it doesn't really m work because this one will, will always be greater. Um, so it has to be, uh, the slope has to be smaller than one to, to make sense. Um, so here I cho uh, choose in 0 0.005, and this is what you get, you get a, a steeper slope over here. <laughs> Um, so this is one of them. You have also the LU, which is kind of like the uh, leaky ReLU, except that over here it's it's a bit more smooth. It's not as as drastic over here. Um, so you get that that thing over there. Um, but here this thing is still still linear. Um, so you have that. You have the smooth ReLU, which is different over here. This is um, an exponential. Um, but it kind of it kind of look like a linear over there. It's also called the soft uh, smooth max or soft plus. Oops. Um, so this doesn't have a linear slope like really. Uh, we have the logit. This one is super weird. We have to do some weird gymnastic over here because it's only defined between um, between uh, zero and one in the x-axis, and it goes from minus infinity to infinity. Um, and it's not included zero and not included one, otherwise you're gonna get weird stuff over here. Um, I don't know where it's used, honestly. I'm not sure. But you have this, you have the logit. And here we're starting to get into the weird stuff. You, you can get, you can actually use the cosine. Um, and this is, uh, this has to do with this paper, which is the random kitchen sink um, paper. Um, you take a look at this, but you can use this, actually. And you have the switch, um, switch function which is better uh, has better performance than ReLU on deeper model um, so that's what it looked like kind of look like a ReLU but uh, like kind of look like a, a smooth ReLU but not really um, so yeah you can use you can use that perfect so uh, we saw a bunch of them um, now uh, if we want to uh, add it into our uh, deep neural network uh, kind of API we have to have some kind of uh, interface. So what we're gonna go with is a paradigm called doc typing. So we have two functions, we have activate and derivate. Um, I just made those up. And what you will do is um, we are gonna have a class called uh, whatever activation. And this we're gonna give to the to the layer. And what you will do is uh, it will have an activate function, which is one of those over here. And we have a derivative of it. So we can always uh, derive it. And then we're gonna replace the art coded part uh, where we're doing the derivation by this this guy and we're gonna uh, replace the activation part with this guy uh, so this way we can always pass um, we can always pass any kind of activation and we're gonna init the layer the neuron layer uh, with um, these guys so we can initiate like this and if we test it with the plotting function that we've been uh, using before um, it still work because we're doing sig.activate and it's doing the same thing um, so that's it. So this is what we're going to take and we're going to put it back into our, um, our Deep Neural Network API. So I hope this was useful uh, for you. If, I, if you think I missed some of them, some of the activation function, 
feel free to uh, let me know in the comments um, if you think that some are also relevant I'm gonna add them over there for uh, documentation and um, yeah have a good week Thank mm -hmm. you.